Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about water and electrolytes. Um, so I get the question very often, how much water should we drink? Um, so the answer to that is really that it depends on your body size, how active you are, um, how, what is your body composition, like how much muscle, muscle to fat, um, where you live. So how hot is it? How humid or dry is it? Um, so in general, I tend to give out the recommendation uh, that you should drink half of your body weight in ounces per day as a baseline. So that's the starting amount of water and then go up from there to make up for anything you do in your life that is further dehydrating. Um, so for example, if somebody weighs 200 pounds, then I would say they should be drinking at least 100 ounces of water per day. Uh, and then that's your starting point. And then add to that to make up for alcohol, coffee, exercise, hot weather, um, dry weather, anything like that. Um, so half your body weight in ounces and up. Uh, so I also recommend for most people, a gallon is a really good goal. Uh, so that's 128 ounces. So even if you're smaller than that, um, so that's not half of your body weight in ounces, um, it's, it doesn't hurt to go above and beyond on your water intake. Um, so it's a good goal to reach optimal health, uh, regardless of body size. Um, now that's not something you do overnight. If you're not drinking a lot of water now, you're not just going to suddenly drink a gallon tomorrow, but if you gradually increase your number of ounces per day with the end goal in mind of getting to a gallon per day, then that would be optimal. Um, now you can um, survive on a lot less water. There are a lot of people who just don't drink water at all, or just not very much, and you're alive and you're okay. <laughs> Uh, but there are many, many symptoms in the body, many aches and pains and things uh, that you may not realize are actually symptoms of dehydration that could go away completely if you start drinking enough water. Um, headaches are really common in dehydration, uh, but less like things that are, are less obvious, like even back pain can be related to dehydration. Muscle pain can be related to dehydration. Um, think about even just the discs in your spine have a lot of water. There's a lot of fluid content in the intervertebral discs. And as we become more and more dehydrated, that water can get leached out of different structures in the body like your discs. And so they'll become more and more compressed. Um, and, and kind of shriveled, like they become more raisiny because we're sucking the water out of them. There isn't enough water to keep them as full and robust as they should be. Um, and so that can create nerve impingements and things um, that can cause a lot of pain and discomfort in the spine. And you may just not even realize that if you drank more water, uh, it would fix the problem. It could reduce your pain significantly. So that's just one example, but there are many, many um, symptoms and problems that can happen throughout the body when we're not drinking enough water. Uh, so you might be surprised if you start drinking a lot more water, you may be surprised at the little aches and pains and dry eyes and all kinds of things that could just go away um, that you didn't realize were related to dehydration. Electrolytes, uh, those are, that's referring to specific minerals that carry an electrical charge when, when we dissolve them in water. So they are positive or negative ions. Now the body needs electrolytes for all sorts of different functions in the body. Um, so like for regulation of muscle contraction, uh, that includes the heart and that includes skeletal muscle. Uh, so we require uh, electrolytes in the proper balance to be able to use any of our muscles, including the heart. Um, we need them for conduction of nerve impulses. Uh, it helps us balance our pH levels and it regulates the osmotic pressure between cells and the extracellular fluid to um, regulate the fluid content inside of the individual cells throughout the body. Um, so electrolytes are critical. Um, and it's not just having electrolytes in the body, but they need to be in balance with how much water you're drinking. So what that means is the more water you drink, the more electrolytes you'll need. Um, because it isn't just a matter of having enough electrolytes. It's about having the right concentration of electrolytes in your bodily fluids. 
So if you drink more water, you have a greater volume of fluid in your body and you need a greater amount of electrolytes to maintain the same concentration in the different fluids. Um, so if we don't have enough electrolytes and that could be just in general or in relationship to how much water you're drinking, uh, then that'll cause muscle cramps, fatigue, malaise, just meaning general crummy feeling, headache, nausea, blood pressure changes. Um, and so if you're drinking a ton of water and you're not increasing the amount of electrolytes that you're consuming, then your kidneys will just excrete that water instead of keeping it in the body to use to solve all the problems that I just discussed on the last slide. Um, so you can drink and drink and drink water, but your body can't put it to good use unless you have enough electrolytes to maintain the correct balance because your body will solve that balance problem by excreting that extra water. Whereas if you have enough electrolytes, then you can keep that water and put it to good use. Uh, so where do we get electrolytes? Um, so if you're eating a good nutritious diet and you're getting enough minerals in your diet and through supplementation, then you're getting electrolytes. Um, so you get it in your food and, and if you take any kind of multivitamin that includes minerals and things. Um, and then we can also add it to our drinks. So if we are drinking a lot of water, then we might like to add electrolytes to the water, water that we're drinking to help make sure that we're getting enough electrolytes in proportion to the amount of water that we're drinking. Um, so when we talk about electrolytes, most people think of sports drinks. Um, but sports drinks are not a great place to be getting your electrolytes. For one, they are loaded with a ton of sugar, or if not sugar, if it's a sugar-free kind, then it's artificial sweeteners, which is also not great. Um, so you're getting loaded with sugar, and they don't actually have enough electrolytes proportionally. So it really doesn't do the trick. Uh, sports drinks are really only recommended uh, for somebody who's participating in high intensity activity consistently for at least an hour. In that case, it could be beneficial because then you're also replenishing your sugar. So you're replenishing your blood sugar, um, which supplies your muscles with energy that they need to continue to, to act at the same level. So it's more than just electrolytes, uh, but it's also the sugar is beneficial in that case. So unless you are operating at a high intensity level for at least an hour, don't drink sports drinks. Um, I'd rather have a candy bar than, than a sports drink if I'm going to choose to have that much sugar. Um, so where do we add the electrolytes to our drinks? That's where lemons, you know, squeezing some lemon juice, some lime, other fruit, things like that. That's where that can really help. There are all sorts of products on the market for adding electrolytes to your water, um, all sorts of little powders and things that you can add. Just be careful of what else is in those powders. Be wary of artificial sweeteners or how much sugar you're taking in. Uh, but as long as you're paying attention to that and, and you're, you're managing those sorts of features, then those are just fine. Um, but that's why, you know, a lot of people, as you drink more and more water, they start to get sick of it. You start to go, oh, this tastes bad. I don't want to drink any more water. And that's because you're diluting your electrolytes. It's your body's way of saying no more water. I don't want to drink this anymore because we're flushing out electrolytes and you, you're drinking too much water and imbalancing the electrolytes. So the solution isn't don't drink more water because you can drink more water. The solution is we need to add electrolytes. And that's why it tastes so much better when you put some lemon in or whatever, you add something in that adds electrolytes to your water. And now suddenly you can keep drinking. Now suddenly that water tastes delicious and you can just drink and drink and drink. And that's because your body is happy now that you're not going to keep diluting your electrolytes, that instead you're adding more in proportion to the water that you're drinking. That's also why we tend to prefer different brands of bottled water. So like I prefer one type of bottled water and my husband doesn't like that one and likes a different one that I don't like. And that's because we prefer the type of bottled water that most closely reflects the electrolytes that our particular bodies are seeking. Um, so we have different preferences in bottled water because different waters have different minerals that are dissolved into that water. Um, so you can overcome that by just adding a little bit of lemon or even a tiny pinch of salt. 
we don't want to make it salt water. Obviously salt water is the opposite effect. It's dehydrating and will give you diarrhea. So we're not making salt water, but if you add just the tiniest pinch of salt to water that doesn't taste great to you, um, like a bottle, a brand of bottled water that doesn't taste good, um, tiniest pinch of salt. And now it suddenly tastes delicious because you've added electrolytes to that water and it becomes a lot more palatable because it's in balance with what your body is seeking. So then the next question I often get from people is, well, what if I'm drinking too much water? Like we've all heard of, you know, a radio contestant who drank too much water and passed away, or, you know, you hear these kind of anecdotal stories about people who got sick because they had too much water. Uh, that's called water intoxication. And really what's happening is you're imbalancing your water an electrolyte ratio uh, to such a severe degree and you're drinking more and faster than your kidneys can deal with it. Um, so if you're drinking up to a liter per hour all day long, your kidneys can still excrete all that water if it's in excess and it's imbalancing your electrolytes. Um, so you're capable of excreting a liter per hour. Now, for comparison, 3.8 liters is how much water is in one gallon. So I'm saying I recommend drinking a gallon a day. That's not even four liters. And if you spread it out over the day, you are nowhere near your kidneys capacity to excrete water if it's in excess. Now add to that, that you should be maintaining your electrolyte balance by increasing the electrolytes in your diet or in your water. Um, and so then your kidneys won't even have to excrete all of that because you'll be in proper balance and your body is going to put that water to good use. Um, so the only way we actually reach water intoxication is by drinking an extreme amount of water for many hours in a row so that we're diluting all of our electrolytes and surpassing the kidney's ability to get rid of water so that we maintain that electrolyte balance. So all you have to do is spread out your water intake and increase your electrolytes so you can put that water to good use. And then a gallon a day is nowhere near what it would take to achieve water intoxication. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.